I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. You are listening to Accidentally Casual, the gaming podcast equivalent of being stuck in a car with a bunch of nerds on a long road trip. My name is Minius of Minius GC, and with me is Tucker from Talking About Games. Hi. And Scott from Bioware Babbling. What's up, nerds? I would love it, Tucker, if you had more, you know, like, excitement when I introduced you. No, he saves his excitement for, like, the rest of the podcast. That's not good enough. (laughs) Oh, it's not? Ow, feelings. No, apparently not. Wait, ow? Dude, you've never has said you got your feelings hurt before. If you do that more often, I would treat you nicer. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if I got my feelings hurt more, you treat me nicer? <laughs> yeah. You always seem like, like even when you say, like, I, I insult you directly, and you're like, I don't worry about it. And this time, yeah. you're like, oh, my feelings. It I'm doesn't like, right. bother. It doesn't bother me much. But speaking of which, man, comments on the last video. Yeah, I didn't. I, I I'd try not to dive into those. Um, yeah, that was not, that was an interesting podcast last week. Yeah, uh, yeah you yeah, picked a good was. day to be called into work against your will, Scott. Uh, I mean, yeah, he missed he it, missed a lot. Was it though? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I still got a taste of it anyway because I posted the podcast on Reddit, and oh boy, that uh, that was fun. Um, yeah, I find I got... it nice that we were talking about how potential censorship of Miranda's ass. And so, so uh, I, I posted a thumbnail of Miranda's ass on our podcast and it got censored by YouTube. Yep. Uh, yeah. But we was, didn't get it was, like, it, a... it was like perfect. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad. I mean, they said it violated the sex and nudity policy and it, it it's either yeah. someone, either someone listening to this is a snitch, which I, that, that's your obligation. I don't actually care. Uh, or they had an AI program that determined that that was too sexy, which I really well, hope was actually what happened. Yeah, 100%. there's an AI that checks for curvature of yeah, objects, and they're like, like nope, that's an ass. nope, this okay. ass is too sexy. We got to take be, it down. To be fair, it may have also done it like, oh yeah, that might be a bear ass because it's just a white it's, suit. It's just Ooh. a white suit that in pro- impossibly skin tight suit. You yeah. also used a like very recognizable picture that Bioware or EA or something could have stuff up of like, hey, take this down if this picture would, is up. Would Bioware Maybe. do that? Well, that's why I said or, or EA have or whoever. I assume I assume I that that's a positive for them, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't. Yeah, I was about to say I don't think they've done anything. They like could just that. be wanting this controversy to be quiet. I, I for the most part, I think it's overblown. Well, oh, it's, it's it's we're going to talk about real controversies on today's show. Yeah, yeah dumb ones. Because we're a glutton for punishment, apparently. And we're we're very controversial podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so so, uh, Minius, I don't know if I told you this, Tucker. I told you this though. Um, Did you? I posted. So I posted the podcast on Reddit, and I got temporarily banned from Reddit from the Mass Effect Reddit for two days. Uh, well, for too much self promotion, for one and two. Yeah, the self promotion um, thing. Apparently, Miranda's ass is a forbidden topic. Well, it's possible that got out of hand real quick. Yeah, uh, I can imagine that people probably flooded the subreddit for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they probably just they had a field. The, the self promotion which... thing, I, I I get that. Yeah, um, the, the based moderators... on what they're trying to do. Yeah, the moderators were super nice. They kind of laid it down a little bit for me, like. So that was at least helpful. So yeah, thank they, you guys I mean, for clearing that up for me. However, um, a thing to note about with subreddits, the Anthem subreddit has also been getting flooded. It has been. A bunch of different, either people from other sub, gaming subreddits or something like that trying to show support for Anthem. For that, Anthem? Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, it's been crazy. Like, All Anthem, right, explain to me what's going on there. Okay, so there was a earnings call, essentially that is being deemed to determine it's what this is the week. fate of Anthem. Okay, yeah, so I think week. we mentioned that on the show um, last week. And pretty much... It'll probably be tomorrow when yeah, the podcast comes I out. I know I posted something about it, but essentially it's a hashtag started of I believe in Anthem. And a, bu- you know, a bunch of different... you know On Twitter, it's really started picking up. And then on Reddit, 
what happened was different Reddit groups, um, I think, like, the Destiny Reddit group, the, uh, Des what was it, Destiny, Diablo, um, Team Fortress, yeah. Division, they've had old school RuneScape is on there, that one's been my favorite. Yeah, like, all sorts of different franchises, all, like, chiming in, just pretty much saying, like, hey, we support Anthem, and we want to see this franchise grow, which has been... The, ne I never would have predicted that to happen. Just the gameplay is really fun to a point. They just they need the end game needs a lot of tweaking. Oh, there's a lot of things. Weapon so, balances but, needed a lot of work. The storyline the, the needed a lot of the work. The loot system in that game was one of the worst I'd ever seen. Oh, it, it almost like I think the best way I heard described it was it took the worst parts of Destiny in <laughs> like the worst part of Destiny loot and the worst part of Division loot. Put it together, and that's what you've got. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it they, from what I understand of that game, they had to put that thing out uh, on a deadline, so they just they just did it without testing and balancing. Yeah, I think I've only played about ten minutes of Anthem, and that was its beta. The I mean, it's a general concept loop of uh, being an advanced form of Mass Effect Three and Mass Effect Andromeda Combat. Uh, it's yeah. just. Boy, I, I really do not like bullet spongy enemies, and that was one of the worst offenders. Yeah, that one was. I mean, it's, it's pretty. Specifically, I mean, oh, like the they, they got the abilities that don't do anything, and when I mean they they do stuff, but they don't actually do any damage. And when you pump up the difficulty, they really don't do anything, and it's just like, all right, it's just a shooter now. Uh, yeah, oh, I mean, so it sounds like it's kind of meant to be with a group of people. Then, Still, yeah, with a yourself. group of people. I mean... Um, oh, okay. Does it scale when yeah. uh, you have people? Oh. Well, actually, yeah. you know, I'm, okay. I'm, actually, I'm not entirely sure, but I it's not really a soloable thing. Like, it once is you if get you're up patient. To, once you... Like, GM1, you can probably solo if you have a pure legendary build. Going up to GM3, unless you have the best legendary build and really know what you're doing, you... Eh, yeah... You know, you probably I, can't do. Are some those of the like chapters? Yourself. Are those chapters? Uh, in no difficulties. Game? Difficulty, oh, okay. difficulty levels. Yeah, kind of yeah. like it go, normal hard difficulty. Yeah. Yeah, and so, then essentially GM one, two, and three was meant to be like not only increasing difficulty, but also your chances of getting like um, epic and legendary loot. Okay. So that that might come out tomorrow. Uh, may, I'm just well. I'm AK guessing today? that it is because that's oh, when the podcast because we're, we're recording. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was never official anyway, right? I, I think only that the call is happening this week. Okay. Yeah. I uh, haven't heard much about the call itself. I know about the swarm of people coming to support it. Honestly, what would be better instead of like posting pictures online is if everyone on like the same day or something just launched the game. And actually, like, flooded the servers and showed how many people actually load the game. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, they're not posting something on Reddit. They're actually launching their game. They're populating the server. They're, you know, One thing actually... I... And get it, get it to crash? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, I think one thing as well, because there's um, a podcast I, I listen to occasionally. It's called the Freelancer Podcast. Um and kind of listening to what th what they were saying, and a lot of it is pretty much like, there's not much the community can do at this point. Like, we can definitely show our support and stuff like that, and maybe Bioware might be able to use that. I was like, hey, look, in the last, like, week or so, look at all, you know, look at X amount of Twitter, you know, tweets about us, and so on and so forth. Yeah, but traffic. I think, yeah, I think a lot of it is they kind of have a lot of the data that they need to either make sure that this game continues or it's not enough and they scrap it. From from what I understand, it's a potential they're thinking about tripling the amount of people working on it. Which, I mean, to be fair, that's, um, from my understanding, there's 30 people working on it. And so in that case, it would be 90 people working yeah, on it's it. Not, it's not like 2,000 people are going to work on it now. N yeah, no. I, and even I, still, Bioware as a third part you know as a triple a developer 
I mean, they're still nowhere near the size as, you know, a lot of like the Ubisoft studios or anything like that. I will say on the subject that let's say we want to pour resources into a Bioware franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthem's not my choice. I, I would think, much. I think I it's would, worth it. I would much rather have them pour additional finance into the next Dragon Age or next Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. If you have a, if it's one or if it's one or the other. Well, uh, yeah, but how many? But I don't is, know is, if it's is, one or the other. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, if they give me a chunk of money and they're like, okay, you can split your resources or you can put them all into a new Mass Effect game. And what do you think I'm doing? Oh yeah, but what no if shit. what if Anthem does well with this rework, and then it brings in a new profit for them that that can get yeah. allocated to the new Mass Effect or Dragon Age? Yeah, will it though? I mean, will it? Here's I mean, the one thing it I will typically say typically will get with, recycled through development. One thing I will say that at least kind of supports the case that hey, Anthem has a future. One thing that I constantly have heard in the reviews or when people ever talk about Anthem is. I see the potential. I see this could be a really good game, but they fucked up on the execution. Um, so when I hear that a lot, and then when I look at like the sales of the game itself, it's still, you know, I think it came out 20, was it 2018 or 2019 when it came out? 18. 2018, thank you. Um, like when it came out in 2018, it was... That year, it was in the top 10 best-selling games of that year. It was 2019, I lied. January 2019. Was it actually? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, first, like, where, on what list? Because those lists are never official unless oh, it's a specific country. Yeah, it, was, it was, like, PlayStation and stuff. It was, was like, on... PlayStation digital downloads? Because yeah. that's official. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I know, and I, know I, I, I kind of remember what he's talking yeah. about. So, I mean... And granted, I also know it was on... Uh, but to be fair, so is Division yeah. uh, when it first launched, and so is Destiny, and all of those games had issues. It's just popular because you know, the while there's people talking about it or having raising issue about it, there's more people that are silent about it that are just kind of passively watching a trailer or two going, oh, I know them, they make good games, and... That yeah. looks fun, and they'll buy the game and not know about some of the issues. I think one thing is, like, well yeah. is the monetization system that they use. It's very similar to what they use in Apex Legends and Fortnite, which have shown to be highly profitable. So at least in how they set up their um, their I monetization I remember looking is, at that when they when it first came out and looking at the monetized stuff, and there was absolutely nothing to buy. And I went, huh? Oh. Uh, hey, that's I interesting. Hey, it's a bold hey, strategy. I said, As... I said, hey, I said that how they set up their monetization system was effective. I didn't say what was in it. I, I was like, I mean, like, like I thought they were gonna like, like most games over flood that, and you're like, man, I don't want to spend any more money on this game. I'm like, oh, there's there's actually nothing there. Yeah, that, that's well, an interesting strategy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember there's definitely yeah, there really wasn't too much other than the way of skins. I know they probably made a decent amount of money when, on N7 day, when they first, like, they released, like, um, Mass Effect armor. So it's like, um, the Ranger got Turian armor, Interceptor got the Quarian, um, the Colossus got, um, Krogan armor, and then the Storm got Asari armor. Um, that Ooh, probably no made Solarians. it. Yeah, I'm sure that probably made a decent amount of money, but... What would you do? Like, have you ever seen a Solarian in an armored suit? I mean, aren't there suits? I know, I, I would think that armored. they would do that, but I just, that's not, that's not very no. common. Well, no, I'm thinking about, like, yeah, I see, because we see in, like, some of the, like, I think to, like, Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect, and, like, especially on, um... The Vermeyer mission with Karahi when he's doing his speech and stuff. I remember seeing like fully suited Solarians, but I don't ever remember seeing like. In, know, in all like, fairness, there aren't that many super mecha uh, characters in Mass Effect. No, I want not. a Volus skin for the Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> just, just I feel like it would just an, be an a giant enormous, round... an enormous brown blob, and then that says weird shit. 
<laughs> I yeah. am the Imagine true that thing pummeling God. towards you through the forest. That's the last thing you see. <laughs> Your mortal eyes just gaze upon a giant Colossus Volus. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, that would be so But good. speaking of games that are coming back from the dead, so Six <laughs> Days in Fallujah is happening. That's kind of wild. Yeah. So, I, I don't so know give, if y'all know people, the significance. Give people the background on that. I don't, well, do y'all do y'all know the significance? I, I of... do, but I'm assuming people who listen don't. Scott, yeah. do you know it? I do know the significance of. It, uh... Explain it as if nobody knows it, Tucker. Okay, so cool. So, Six Days in Fallujah was a game that was going to come out in 2010, based around the Second Battle of Fallujah, uh, Second Battle of Fallujah during the Iraq War in 2004. That was one of the worst battles that happened during the Iraq War. There were about 1,500 insurgents that were killed and about the same number captured. Um, there were, on the ally, on like our side, there was about 100 people killed and about 600 injured. Mm -hmm. But there were also about 800 civilians that were killed. Um, it got, like... There is a thing before the invasion of Fallujah, because Fallujah was uh, occupied by almost every insurgent group that was there. And three of them had uh, their bases, or not bases, but they had some form of a headquarters in Fallujah. And so uh, we dropped millions of flyers in Fallujah that said to that we are coming in, that the U.S. and as well as British forces and Iraqi soldiers are going to come in, and anyone that is a male over the age of 12 will be shot and or will be considered a hostile and shot on sight. Jesus. And, the, and I mean, about 90% of civilians fled, but there was some controversy about... Um, uh, men not being allowed to leave Fallujah, that they were being stopped and arrested or forced to turn back or things like that. And this game, uh, Six Days in Fallujah, has you in, like, right in the boots of a Marine as they sweep through Fallujah. And the way that you cl uh, clear a place like that is you have to go through every single building. And this game has interviews with uh, Marines that were there, insurgents that were captured and are still alive, and Iraqi civilians. And um, this game, all of them. I mean, the, the real, in, from the storyline, this game was canceled right before it came out. Like how many years ago? Yeah, mm. it was 2010. Okay, uh, so, because which, it was Konami that was going to publish it. Yeah, and, and that, and mind you, that was about six years after the Battle of Fallujah actually happened. Yeah. So, um, like, this was still relatively fresh on people's minds. And there's there's major controversy just around what we did in Fallujah. Our use of white phosphorus mm -hmm. um, is illegal. Uh, the British British forces are not allowed to be in any theater of war that uses white phosphorus, and we also used white phosphorus uh, against uh, people, which isn't allowed. That is, and but I mean, the the way that the develop not developers the way that the Marines or the people that they're giving the interviews with about what it's like to go through the buildings. That's kind of what the focus of the game is. And I think that is something really important to the gaming industry is the message that this game is going to be kind of putting across is Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, all these other games that we have. It, it They do depict war and they do show some of the horrors of it, but... It is, first and foremost, entertainment. It is still uh, glorified. It's still enjoyable. The developer said that they want you to leave this game just understanding the human cost of war. That they want people to leave the game just, like, not wanting to join the military or not wanting to go to war. Like, understanding the it, the 
actual costs of what it's like for people there. And I think that, that this is a major step for the gaming industry because it, it, it is an extremely realistic depiction that, you know, that's a narrative that I'm pretty sure there are some people that they don't want that narrative out there because it, you know, it, it actually showcases just how is brutal. That, is that where the controversy is? That's not where I thought the controversy was. I mean, the controversy is in its realistic depiction of it. And Fox News, because, you know, they like to make they like to make noise. Um, they brought a mother of one of the soldiers that was uh, killed in Fallujah. And God, that interview was that interview was awful. That is what sunk the as soon as that interview went out, the public wanted this game shut down. Yeah. It, the, even though Fox News had a Marine, or I don't know exactly if he was a Marine, but he was in Fallujah with a squad, and and they also had a developer on there. But the questions that they asked the Marine, and then co- like they asked the mother, it's like, how do you feel that your dead son might be depicted in this game? Jesus. And then they like look at the developer, and they're like. Do you feel like this is the right way to honor those that died? Like, they are very much, like, pushing a, this is an issue, not actually well, letting them. Most, and this is true of it's, all news outlets, are interested in stirring up controversy for the sake of getting viewers in. So but, yeah, if you're looking for them to actually, depict you know, it fairly. like, depict things for any of them, I, I don't, you're, you're going to fail. It's also, there. like, you know, Fox News. No, I, I, I don't think it... I mean, if you want to watch any news channel, it's almost all like that. Well, I, I mean, I I don't... I mean, other industries or other uh, news outlets have had raised controversy with games, but I don't... I have not noticed any that have done it like Fox. Like, because that was also uh, Mass Effects um, and as well as previous other ones. Modern Warfare... Uh, all those games. I know one thing as well is that Fox News... News, at least when it comes to video game industry stuff, so like the you know Mass Effect sections or with, um, they push the video games cause violence. Yeah, well, they're a lot of the times they're the ones that start this coverage of the story, and then others will you know CNN and MSNBC and stuff like that will jump onto them, but they're generally reporting like oh, controversy comes out first started on Fox News, blah 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 blah. I have a question, and this really gets into how I feel about the subject. If this was a movie that came out, would would it be anywhere near the controversy? No. Oh fuck no. So there are movies of. I'm this. sorry. Have you Everyone heard of be like, movie? "Wow, they're on!" Like, so it's really just. I mean, it's either the interact. It's the interact. Interact. Well, that... I mean, the game hasn't come out yet, and nobody's really played it, so. No. Um, I don't see how it's, they could have a full opinion on it because it could be oh no. that the interaction is it's not quite there. It's described as a first-person tactical shooter. And I mean, there is Cyberpunk an 2077 was described as something that it wasn't, so I, I'm well, not going to believe that. Well, I mean, it, they're, they're specifically saying that it's a tactical shooter, which would put it in the same lines as like Siege or Ghost Recon Wildlands, a game where movement and your gear is a lot more dependent on like your situation mm-hmm. and being very careful with how you're moving rather than Call of Duty or Battlefield or Halo or uh, those other games that are just normal first-person shooters where you do just kind of run and gun. It, I mean, this is more along the lines of uh, how much do you believe you're allowed to make a point in any kind of media. I mean, like, well, I mean, like it's like I said, if this is a movie, I, it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you got to be able to push the envelope in certain cases. So either ban all of this stuff or don't ban any of it. Well, I mean, look at move, like, you know, you have like the movie about, um, what happened in Benghazi. A famous one is black Hawk down, you know, and things like that where it's like yeah no the mo- the movie industry has covered 
things like this in the past. I don't know of any movies that off the top of my eye head or um or I guess like Jarhead would be a good example as well. L of just like movies that cover a similar topic. Um so yeah, the mo movie industry has been able to do this for years. Well, I mean, it's also the video game industry is the new boogeyman oh, to yeah, absolutely. people who want something to blame for violence or stuff like that. It used to be um, movies, and it also used to be music. I mean, Eminem, Manson. Uh, I mean, all it'll, those, like, it'll always be whatever's new, right? I mean, that's going to come back. It'll, it'll, oh, yeah. It'll, there will be some new music coming out that people are going to be blaming soon. Be because before that, it was books were, were causing it or what was it? things like that. It it's going to be something, right? I, I, the way I kind of look at it is, is it's a little bit of a disrespect towards games as art. And, yeah, that's, yeah. and, and, and that's, I mean, you're allowed to disrespect whatever you want. Just appreciate the fact that if, if you're making something and some of this stuff is for profiteering and I understand, you know, like let's say it's a movie that's coming out and they're just trying to profit off a of controversy, which happens all the time, by the way. Uh, if this is a video game and they're trying to profit off that, you can criticize it. But if they have something to say in a, mm -hmm. a form of art, that's exactly the basis behind freedom of speech. That's, that's exactly what you want. This, the fact that Six Days in Fluja is coming back and it was one of the most controversial games that never got released, mm -hmm. it got me looking at a bunch of, essentially just the history of controversial games. And, I mean, like, talking about how video games have been controversial, the Doom being mentioned with the Columbine shooting. Yep. I remember that. And, I mean, even being Doom itself being mentioned in the basement tapes that were recorded by the shooters. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, that didn't help. And there was that. There was uh, Mortal Kombat as well as Night Trap that yep. helped the creation of the ESRB rating. Mm -hmm. um, it, essentially out of fear of, okay, let's regulate ourselves versus the government coming in and regulating us. Oh, yeah, but the, I mean, also Night Trap is very tame, and the people who were talking about Night Trap, they, they were asked, like, hey, you said that in this game you, like, attack women, and it's sexually explicit, and all this stuff. Did you ever play the game? They were like, no. Like, ah, right, cool. Like, <laughs> you know, they're, it's the same kind of thing that they've done, is like, this is violent, you can... It shows all this nudity and everything like that. Well, have you actually looked at the game? Have you have you played it? Nope, not at all. Cool. <laughs> Unsurprising. Have, have you guys ever played? And this is this game came out about eight years. Spec Ops: The Line. Yes, yep, I love it. That's I haven't that's, played that's, it, but I know all about it. So that that was more of a serious war game take. Yes, yeah. and that, that was a is very. Off of a book. I mean, it was. It, they kind of had something to say, and it wasn't. It wasn't even overly political. It was just, you know, like, dude, war is rough, and that that's kind of what I think of when I think of what this game might be. Yeah, and that well, was a yes. I mean, I wonder also if this game was just called like Six Days in the Desert, if anyone would care. I well, think... I mean, it, it's called Six Days in Fallujah because it's the battle was over the span of six days. I'm aware of that, but like... you say six days in the desert, and it still takes place in Fallujah. It's not in the title. Yeah. That, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that, and especially it's like we were still in the middle of the Iraq War. It was still going on, and I think that also kind of brought just the, that idea of, like, this is still something going on, and we're making a game about it. I think also just probably left a bad taste in people's mouths because, like, this is something that people, you know, that we were still kind of going through at the moment. It, it depends on how recent something is, right? Is that that's what you're saying? That's essentially, yeah. I mean, because I mean, like, dude, there are World War II games that are coming out all over the place. Yeah, and but well, World War II has been, you know, a bit longer that's, than that's that's my Iraq point. War. Yeah, yeah, you know, or World War One. There's not even anyone alive that fought in World War One anymore. So. Yeah, I think the last like World War One veteran passed away five years ago or something like that. It might seem a little longer than that, but yeah. So, but there were 
So, like, there are controversial games that you y'all know of, and like you know, Mortal mm-hmm. the controversy behind Mortal Kombat, Wolfenstein, uh, all of those games, Postal GTA. But while I'm doing all this research, there were there's other games like JFK Reloaded, which was a mm-hmm. game where you play as Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, wait, that's not the right part. Uh, no, is that Lee Harvey? Who's the one that shot JFK? No, Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, essentially, you play as him as you try to shoot JFK. Um, there is Super Columbine Massacre RPG. Yep. Which is an art, like a RPG style Columbine game. Mm-hmm. There's and these were games that were released. One's I mean, mu- it, uh, it's, those don't even yeah. compare to something like this. I mean, those are just over the top. These games came out, and it's just weird that people developed these games and were like, "Yes, this is a good idea." <laughs> yeah, like, but- I don't. I don't get that. That I wouldn't be surprised if it's almost a trolling effect. Of I mean that that was the quote unquote explanation for hatred, but like I I just I don't get that. I I don't because developing a game takes a while, yeah. and unfortunately, some of these games have some development put towards it, which means these people sat down and worked on it for a while. Yeah. And it just makes you think, like, you know, what's wrong? Oh, yeah. Why? You have to... At that point, there's a certain willing of commitment that you have to go through to go, you know, to really commit to that. And just... What's the best way to put it? There's a certain level of assholery... That you just have to have to go through with shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I'm probably never going to play this game because we've been over, like, uh, modern stuff or contemporary stuff in video games. It's not something I like to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, normally I watch a movie or something like that, but I, I also think you'd have to see exactly what they do with Six Days of Fallujah before you get upset about it. Yeah. I am really fascinated with that game. I am very much looking forward to it, actually. Okay. Yeah, the only reason why I would be interested in it is because it's a, bit, a little bit of a weird story. There was a wrestling camp I went to, and it was um, the Doug Zembeck wrestling camp. And it was meant to honor Doug Zembeck, who was... He wrestled at the U.S. Naval Academy... Um, but he, the big thing, what he was known for was he, um, I think he led a platoon into Fallujah and he earned the nickname Lion of Fallujah. And so that would honestly be the only reason why I would be vaguely interested is to see, you know, do they actually depict him in it at all? I I mean, I would think that you would shy away from actual depicting actual people. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's not a guarantee at all. So yeah, I mean, if they're, if they're going for historical accuracy, they may use names as of not. I mean, man, that that's a that's an iffy. That's something you yeah. really you're sitting there and you're like, all right, guys, that, we got to make a choice here. Yeah, well, honestly, because in there's that situation there's pros and cons to both. Yeah, well, and a lot of it is also. Um, some of it is also you you definitely that would be just more of a thing of like you would have to talk to the families of and get their okay with this. Um, that's a, I, it's a good way to get sued, I think. Oh yeah, well, I mean you well you probably do need some. Well, you would get well, you would get sued if you like depicted them or brought them. You know, yeah, if you depicted them without consulting the families. Oh yeah, you would get sued well, behind heaven. But if... Question: When someone signs on to join the military, uh, what? How much of themselves are they signing? Because same thing when someone joins like a football team or mm-hmm. something, and their likeness is used in Madden, mm-hmm. uh, they typically consult the they'll consult NFL and so on. They don't. They, I mean, they'll they may talk to the player, but as far as I know, I think they just kind of do contracts with 
NFL. They need the uh, uh, permission of the NFL Players Association, mm-hmm. which is but the not players. the players themselves. That's oh. that's what the players is. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, so and, and has... if it's not if they don't get it, they, I mean, they didn't always use like there were, for instance, they had college games, and college players aren't allowed to make money, but they were in a profit, and they had to cancel all of those games. Mm-hmm. So the, these mm-hmm. players are getting compensated. So yeah. they'd have to compensate well, people if they're profiting off of it. I didn't know the military yeah. was anything like that. If, like, if you're signed onto the military, if they only need permission from the like the government in that manner. I, I, don't know. I wouldn't be surprised also, while they may get, well, in a court case, like, if it were to say, like, oh, because, you know, if the military okays it, then you're okay. I would not be surprised because you're dealing with such soft, such sensitive subjects. And and maybe this some of this is because of, of my anthropology degree of, like, dealing with sensitive subjects and going through that process of getting okayed for things. I would not be surprised if they would go that extra mile of, okay, we're getting an okay from the military... But we also want to consult with if we want to, you know, talk to some of the family members in because, uh, like I said, oh, like sure. veterans. I mean, were, I, I can imagine they could be doing that out of respect and such yeah. as well. And I'm just wondering, yeah, like contract wise. Yeah, contract. That's how that would work. That's a legal nightmare. I don't. Hell no, I don't but want to touch. The, six oof. days in Fallujah is the music is being done by Marty O'Donnell. The guy that did Halo. Really? Yes. That's and not who other I would be my first choice. Halo but... and Bungie developers that are working, or Halo and Destiny yeah, developers. Yeah, I, 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 I just it. read that it was it was done by a bunch of Bungie developers. So that makes sense to me. That's yeah. That's the uh, hmm. at least I think that was Marty. Does this have a release date, or is this just the hey, it's coming back? Uh, twenty twenty one. Okay. So sometime in the near future, or I'm, I'm 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 very much looking forward to it. It might be one of my top top games of the year already. Just simply, interesting. Just simply because of the potential imp- if it follows the impact that I believe that it might have, which is be one of the first, like re like di- just the depiction of war in this manner it is different from the call of duty well, or any um, of the other games that it it might have an impact on the industry and i feel like that one thing i would to me it almost sounds like you want the um six days in fallujah to almost be like what um quiet on the western front was for world war one where it was essentially seen as almost like one of the first anti-war you know, books to ever Anti-war come out. Anti-war war games. Yeah, and it's, or, yeah, essentially, yeah. you know, for, you know, All Quiet on the Western Front, it was a book, and it essentially depicted, like, here is how horrible World War One was. And I'm wondering if it, they're, again, trying to do the exact same thing, but just in video game form. So you're interested yeah. in this from a fact of potential culture shift in video games? Y- yeah, just, again, from someone that's in the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I mean, even if but, you're just interested in the industry, that's that's uh, something to look yeah. at. This is exactly and, why they should be allowed to do the game, by the way. Because it, it, it's like, you know, Call of Duty, with the most recent Modern Warfare, I didn't play uh, Cold War. It, I lost interest in that. I thought it was going to be, like, sneaky spy stuff, and then I actually saw gameplay, and it was just flashy shooting. Mm-hmm. It what didn't look as fun as Modern Warfare. But they, they did go with a realistic depiction of things with modern warfare but it was still you know a fun shooter game yeah while six days in fallujah i feel like they're going to go for a realistic depiction of it i'm guessing a minimal hud if any at all Mm -hmm. um you may just have to like remember how many rounds you have or all that kind of stuff or where you're going Mm -hmm. um i think you there may be some sort of healing mechanic um i think they said that there is a healing over time but it is more that is because of gameplay but it'll have a realistic depiction and especially if you can go through with um 
a group. So if you have you and a friend or something going with you, that it might be a really interesting experience as a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they, uh, I'm just kind of thinking of when, um, what was the Tom Hanks movie? That's like the really big war one. Oh, Saving but... Private Ryan. Is that? Yeah. 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 Um, how they were, they said that that was one of the first ex- realistic depictions of the Normandy landing mm-hmm. that, that bothered people who were watching the movie. They had to leave the movie and well, they... stuff like that. But it was a dark depiction of what it was like. Well, I remember they um, they showed that scene to people who were at D-Day. Um, and specifically, because I think in Saber Private Ryan, they were showing Omaha Beach. And they, show, and they showed that to people who were there on Omaha Beach that day. Um, and they said, like, yep, that's... Yeah, that's the closest depiction I've ever seen, and yeah, it's pretty much spot on. Yeah. And I, I've, but while looking at these controversial stuff, I rabbit hold, and I've been going down like documentaries with World War II and all these other like controversial stuff that happened that some of these games are based off of. Mm-hmm. And man, it's just they're. It's just it, we've done some things in history that's just not good. Uh, continuously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe as, that is as the I'm looking mild through history, of the day. As I'm looking through history, I'm like, man, the humans, uh, are, kind, humans are kind of shit. When, especially when you specifically look at wars. I mean, the, you mentioned like, hey, this stuff's illegal. I mean, dude, almost everything that happens in that. There is one YouTuber that make I think it's like Monty May or something like that. He makes really detailed. Uh, breakdowns of like Pearl Harbor mm-hmm. and stuff like o- almost a minute by minute breakdown of like this ship got hit at this exact point by this plane mm-hmm. and this ha- like really cool breakdown of that. Damn. Another thing did this week, Little Nightmares 2 came out. I haven't played it. Dude. Fun game. Like I was, I'm sitting it, here. I'm thinking, like, how do we transition to something <laughs> that we normally talk about? And you're just like, dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I we're mean, waiting. I mean, it's, it's the other. other for, we're having a very serious, very serious, Tucker. serious discussion. And I'm thinking, like, how do we transition this back to where we normally? And you're just like another thing, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Tucker. Like, he squirrels like no oh squirrel God. has ever squirreled. I was like, I'm like, we gotta do, we gotta be careful about this. We gotta be careful. Like, oh no, no, we're just gonna go. <laughs> yeah. So, Little Nightmares Two. <sighs> uh, oh my God. Ab- absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh my fucking the, God. The first one was uh, it, like the it's a, those are platform narrative games, kind of like Inside or Limbo or Unravel. Yeah. And yeah, the but- first one is it was it was a really good game it was dark it had a creepy narrative but it was still a fun puzzle game and Mm -hmm. the second one absolutely excelled on every step it looks gorgeous the creatures like the kind of monsters that you interact with are absolutely terrifying like the teacher who her neck extends and she can move her head around like a serpent snake Mm -hmm. ah creepy creepy as hell and it, but uh, I it was good, it's absolutely great game. I streamed it. I got back. I uh, loaded up stream and just streamed the campaign of it. Loaded up stream. Yeah, because I want to stream when the Mass Effect remaster comes you, out. You mean you loaded up like Twitch? Twitch. Yeah. You said stream. Yeah, yeah. Stream. Yeah, I streamed it. But you said you loaded up stream and streamed it. Sure. 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 Yeah. Um, because I want to do that when Mass, the Mass Effect remaster comes out. Many but... ain't nothing stopping him now. Many ain't nothing kinda... stopping him. <laughs> it was kind of like, you know, trying to get back into streaming and doing that. Although I need to, I need to make a channel that's actually close to the YouTube name that I have. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's bad at least. All right, now that we're uh, back on to normal video, Scott, have you been playing anything interesting recently? Um, the game I've been playing interesting um, for Valentine's Day, I just got Breath of the Wild finally. Game I've been oh, wanting that? to play forever. 
And um, for a while, I haven't been wanting to play a game where I can really sink my teeth into. Like, the best way to put it is, is that I've played, like, because I, I just got done with the Dragon Age series, and that took me, like, 500 hours. So that was, like, my long-term commitment, like, game. And then when I got done with that, I wanted to go on my video game Ho phase. But now I'm ready for hey. another commitment again. What games did you do through your whole face? Like, did you jump around through? Uh, not that many, honestly. I didn't really... I haven't oh, really what a weak one. phase. Oh, I know. It was a very weak hoe phase. Um, I know... Experimented with... Um... A lot of multiplayer games, for the most part. It, pretty much what I would do is, like, whatever game that my friends were playing... I would download that and I would play it with them. And I wouldn't do that much. So, like, a little bit of Apex, uh, Squadrons, uh, okay. Fall Guys as of recent. Um, Squad Squadrons is... I think Squadrons is still a pretty good game. Have they added the new ships to it yet? Yeah, they added the B-Wing, which is my baby. I love the fucking B-Wing. And, and the, the TIE Defender. Tri yeah, the, it, that I thought that thing was a joke at first. That no. is an actual Star Wars thing, dude. D d that's been in canon since Rebels. I thought that was a joke. No, the Tide Defender. Yeah, no, the Tide Defender's legit. Um, yeah, they brought it back in Rebels, so it's fucking canon now. So now they just need to bring it into the Mandalorian. Oh God, please no! I, I'll be honest. Like as a giant Star Wars nerd. I don't think any of our hero ships can survive a TIE Defender. I'm just saying that right now. Is it really that powerful? It has the speed of an X-Wing, which is faster than pretty much anything the Rebels have. It has more weapons, more more weapons, and it has shields. Yeah, it's pretty fucking horrifying. It The best way to describe it is it has the speed of an A-Wing and the durability and guns of an X-Wing. So here's a here's a dumb follow up question. If it is so overpowered, why didn't the Empire just make a lot of those? Why? That's a great question. Why um, doesn't this movie make sense? <laughs> um. So the reason why is because it was. So they actually do describe what happened. So Thrawn was the one that brought the Tide Defender into fruition, and w because the problem is, yeah, the it's in every way, shape, and form better than the Tide you know, the standard TIE model. But the problem was, TIEs are really fucking cheap. And you can field a lot of them. Ah, uh, okay. So, you know, it's like the cost efficiency and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and what happened okay, okay. was during... So, spoiler alert for anyone who's watching Star Wars Rebels. Spoilers! Some of the th yeah, thank you, Minius. Um, for the Thrawn trilogy as well. What pretty much happens was the, it was uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn's personal project, and during one of the Thrawn novels, I, th I think it's the second one. What happens is is that th they were going to take resources away from the Tide Defender project and put it into the Death Star. Thrawn said, "Fuck no, don't do that." They spend a whole book pretty much going through shenanigans for that. Then, during Star Wars Rebels, the TIE Defenders were being built on Lothal, which kind of is the main planet where everything takes place. But, um, to make a very long story short, Thrawn disappears off of Lothal, the factory that was building the TIE Defenders gets destroyed, and so the main person who is heading the project disappears, their factory is gone, the TIE Defender pretty much be pretty much died right there before oh, okay. you know right before the rebellion started or, so or, it was it was like some luck as well as it just being an expensive thing to make yeah pretty much and yeah it sounds about right sounds sounds pretty on par for star wars yeah exactly uh but like thrawn is also now coming to the mandalorian yeah he has been mentioned which oh um i know which, there's been... he's now canon they decanon him oh, no. and oh, then God. they recanoned him right oh i think please. do i have to talk about the no Star Wars canon? no you don't okay, we'll stop right you. now we can talk okay. about the I, other I, I, I've, I've been, been very uh, 
very quiet this whole podcast because you guys are talking about stuff I don't actually have any expertise about. And yeah. This is one of them. But we'll just stop right there. Yeah, thank you because it's like, yeah, oh that's... boy, I know, I got my thoughts on Star Wars canon, okay. but oh dear God, that is a. That's, I, that I, I a, like that character in the books, and I think it's cool they brought him back, and that's as much as I'll I'll say about that. Yeah, he's um, yeah. With the original fun guy was asking about which games you wanted to play is because I actually did something I've never, never done before, and I've taken the current viral game and I played it. So uh, I played ooh? Valheim. Okay, I've been hearing. I that? enjoyed oh. the fuck out of that. I yeah, couldn't I've believe heard... it. Like that game is great. So okay, what is what is it exactly? So you're saying you tried a the... new game. And you happen to like it. That, that happens all the time, Tucker. I just don't like the games you like. Oh. So, okay. D- someone describe the game for me. Okay, so basically, you know, like, the... it's 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 in the same vein of a lot of um, survival games. Okay. But the, but like the game in and of itself. Like that? Sort of. I, I, the way I look at it, and I, don't, I haven't played a whole bunch of these games because they always, they never quite fit it, but I've been looking for something that's a kind of crafting uh Survival. So basically, you are take you're a dead warrior taken by Odin, and you're taken to the tenth realm, which is fictional. I mean, they're all fictional, I think. But and you need to erase his enemies. But it's basically a uh, resource gathering, building, survival game. Uh, and it's right in my. I cannot believe how sucked into that I got. Okay. Yeah. What is is it? Kind of like the forest. It's it's or? it's like a more adult version of Minecraft. That's the okay. only way I can describe it. Uh, it has some similar aesthetics, but different. Um, you, it's along the same veins of, of Rust. It's in early access, but it's very complete. Okay. For something in early... I, I could not believe how much... It, it's up to 10 players cooperative. Or you can play... I've been playing it solo, and I've been enjoying it solo. Mm-hmm. Are there... So, it's just survive is there an end objective or is it survive as far as i've as i've gotten to it basically you survive but you're trying to you summon a boss and you have to be minecraft survive i don't know i haven't played enough of minecraft to to really get into that but as far as i can tell they're they're different they're different bosses and you need to uh harness resources build uh upgrade your gear so you can take on the next boss and then the next boss will drop something that allows you to harvest new resources and then build up your gear. But it's okay. I it I would like I could not believe how into it I, I was. Yeah. Cuz I I would love a casual like if just like just survival, like just trying to survive for a little bit so I can throw on podcasts or more documentaries cuz I'm You getting, might you I'm might like this game. Documentaries. You might like this game, but um yeah, that's yeah, what I've I was been, like, you, you, and I'm a sucker for medieval stuff. I've been yeah. playing a lot of Age of Empires, mm-hmm. Stronghold Two, Rise of Nations. Take a look at a the of... uh, the videos of it. Ba- basically, the the deadliest thing I've incurred. Uh, I mean, I haven't actually been killed by this, but there's a lot of videos online about this. The deadliest thing in the game is, are trees. If you cut down a tree, they fall in weird ways, and they will kill you. Like bug fall? <laughs> no, or like is it they'll just, just start teetering. And then they could bounce off another tree and just land on you, which you know it's logging. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so it's like realistic know, in yeah. that manner. Not, I, okay. I know, Although some um, sometimes it bugs like they wrap around a tree and flings, and that's not yeah. normally how yeah, that yeah. works. That, but that, that's kind of with me when playing Breath of the Wild. I think I have died so far four times. All of no five times. All of them is because I, my stupid ass killed myself somehow. Yeah, I mean, so in in uh, in Valheim, you when you die, you keep, uh, you lose everything in your inventory, and okay. you lose some stats, Ooh. and you're sent back to your spawn point, and then I you like can it. you can go, fight your way back to the spot where you died and pick up your stuff. But if you can't get back to it, you, you're never going to get to it. So you, it's um, it's it's a more forgiving I, uh... version of the survival genre. But it does. It can be a little bit difficult. At some point, apparently, you need to cross the ocean. You need to build a ship and go to another continent. And there can be sea monsters that attack you, and oh. you just you're just not getting back to your spawn point. So anyway, I, I enjoy the crap out of it, and I'm I'm going to continue to play. It for does a while. it have cross? I've added. It looks like it's only it's only PC. on PC at the moment, and okay. only yeah Steam. Uh, there were no plans to bring it to consoles, and then it sold 2 million copies in two weeks. 
And so now Jeez. there's plans to bring it to consoles. No, they haven't confirmed that, but I'd be a little surprised. There's plans to bring it to consoles now. Uh, they're they're I'm probably not, I, they're probably early. I mean, at this point, they're like, okay, this could be popular. It's, it's Fuck, happening. We didn't plan for this. Go, go, but go. it's yeah, it's the it's it, it. I've never jumped into a viral game, and it's the first one I've looked at. I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm this, this is going to be in two to three weeks. This is going to be the game that. Is going to be dominating YouTube and I think probably. it's doing that now. Is it not? Maybe not YouTube, but it's definitely dominating streaming. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. Be I I wouldn't be surprised. I've I added to my wish list. I'm going to get it, but I'm not a broke bitch. Yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it's quite enjoyable. Anyway, so I do that. So we right now we are working through a tournament, or I say we. It's only me that's doing it, right? And you, well, I, I mean, I, you, my you baby are... Starflight hey, is... I have been voting at least. I'm... Yeah, that's good. So have I. Uh, it, I'm always like, I have these little projects and they're somewhat related to Mass Effect. And I always wonder, does anyone actually care? And then I realized that I don't care if people care. So we took 64 different games, we put them in a tournament, and we're trying to figure out what the most recommended tournament game is for Mass Effect fans. And yes, I said recommended. Um... Fascinatingly <laughs> enough, recently Baldur's Gate got bounced. Baldur's Gate Two, Ooh, because coach. it was in a group with Dragon Age Origins, and apparently all the Baldur's Gates fans are also Dragon Age Origin fans, and that, Dragon that Age does, Origins absolutely wrecked that bracket. That absolutely does not wrecked it. Me even in the slightest. Yeah, so like Baldur's Gate got four and a half percent of the vote, uh, and Dragon Age Origins almost eighty percent, which <laughs> but. In second place, Detroit Become Human Detroit in that become specific. Human. Okay. One. Also, uh, there was uh, the group before that. We had a Star Wars bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The top two of of these four move on to the next round. Uh, it was God of War, and then Star Wars Jedi Final Order, Knights of the Old Republic, and then Star Wars the Old Republic. And the what I thought happened was going to happen. The Star Wars games canceled each other out, and two of them got knocked off. Yeah. But they. I mean, they so tied. God of War. So wait, who, God of War and God of War Star and Wars? Knights of the Old Republic will move on, and then Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and the Old Republic move on. If you were to rank those four games, I think you'd put God of War last, but because the vote was split, uh, those ones moved on. Yeah, God of War makes it to the next round. I we'll see if that gets trampled or not. Dead Space also did very very well. Oh, did you ever watch the Dead Space movie? Uh, I probably will not. Although that sounds like something I might enjoy. So if you honestly, if, if you bring that up is... again in a later date, then then I might watch tomorrow. It. Sound uh, later date in a couple of weeks or never. Not. I'm doing two things. That I'm doing actually. I'm playing three games at once, which I normally don't do. Hey Alexa, remind me tomorrow. Oh my to God. Tell Minions to watch. Tom the Dead Tom Space tomorrow's movie. too soon, dude. <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to be. Actually, I need to work. I've Push had three failed video uh, video ideas in a row, and I'm starting to get mad about it. It's, I, it's also okay. did, I, I also did something things. Scott did. Scott, there I, we go. yesterday I spent $150 on RPG books. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I feel called out for that one. No, <laughs> but I was like, like I bet Scott would do this. And I was looking at like, these books are too expensive, but they're, they look pretty badass. So I'm going to uh, start. I mean, that, that's going to take a while to get to. Yeah, I'm not definitely now looking at my stack of D&D &D books I have. Yeah, actually, one of them is the history of, uh, I mean, the whole idea is to look at the history of RPGs that go all the back, and Dungeons & Dragons is the largest influence on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Hands down. But the, um, the... Or, yeah, or looking at my minis that I bought for my party or my die. Yeah, no. So, <sighs> th th thanks, Minius, for calling me out. I really appreciate that. I one. didn't mean to call you out. I'm uh, saying, like, <laughs> I'm doing this, too. That's not a calling you out. They're like copying. I, I, if I you're copying I'm someone, <laughs> I'm giving you shit. Okay. I'm giving you shit. You're, you're also giving yourself shit at the same time, though. Oh, I know. I'm it's roast, like you I'm idiot. You're both just both like me. Double dipping. I'm, I'm bringing you onto the spigot with me. We're roast. I'm just like, I'm roasting you, uh, roasting myself, just back and forth. You know, it's fine. I'm sitting here drinking my water. <laughs> Well, thank right, God so you're staying hydrated. To get to the thing, basically, if you go to uh, my Twitter feed, at MinisGC, you will be able to follow this tournament. We're getting into the really good stuff now. Mm -hmm. And eventually we will crown what end, ends up being the most popular <laughs> game, probably. You mean Witcher 3? 
Yeah, I, I find it weird. Like people are like, oh, Witcher Three is a terrible recommendation for Mesh. Like, yes. no, it's not. What awful? What? It's not as I'm like I, I'm like I don't awful. need to just, I don't need to defend this game to anyone. <laughs> I feel like you haven't played it then. It's such a someone someone's like this is an awful RPG. I'm like all right, dude. Well, okay. Right, like yeah. I don't need to respond to that. <laughs> yeah. I know it's a good game, but it shouldn't Tucker, be on you, this list. Tucker, you haven't it you haven't played it. What? So that really does matter. Well, no, I, I, said, I recognize that it's a good game. I said that it shouldn't be on the list because it dominates. Will it, it though? Will win. I'm not so and, sure anymore. If, if you're picking the top two, you don't that you think Witcher Three will be put third compared to two other things. Well, I mean, first of all, it's 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 in a it's in the side of a bracket, so it's probably going to get to the final. Mm, I mean, probably. it's next next round. It's going up against. The next round is in is the quarterfinals, Cyberpunk 2077, Dead Space, Jade Empire, Witcher like, 3, Wild Hunt. Uh, that, Cyberpunk like, Witcher split 3 off of... is the obvious answer, though. It, it, like, it is the actual but I, I answer think the, if you were to if recommend you were to look a at, game. If you were to look at this tournament, the favorite right now is Dragon Age Origins. Yeah, because well, yeah, that's another Bioware game. But still. But if, you're, if you're looking to recommend, if they were to say, like, you know, recommend me a non-Bioware game, Mass Effect-like game, then you would could say Witcher 3. That's a very safe recommendation. It also like, has... And that makes it boring. also has the most in common with a Bioware game that a non-Bioware franchise has done. Therefore, yeah. is a good recommendation. Yeah. yeah no, it is, yeah. it is the best recommendation. That's what yeah. makes it so boring. It's going to win. Well, we'll see. I mean, I'm curious to see. It's because it, these are specifically people who are following me on Twitter, or who respond to retweets. The other yeah. game that will be interesting to see them go ahead, and these are all designed to be in the finals, would be Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, because that would be my number one recommendation based on the plot. Uh, reminds me a lot of the original Mass Effect and the twists and turns and sci-fi ness of it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what's that? What is Witcher going up against next? Maybe I can convince enough people. I, I to did all just vote go over that, else. and you were listening, but I will do it again for you. Aww, uh, Cyberpunk you. 2077, Dead Space, Jade Empire. That's in a group that's going to come up in a couple days for the quarterfinals. We got it. We got to vote for Dead Space and who's we? And Jade. I, I, I my mean, dog's agreeing the Jade, too. The my dog's Jade Empire noise about it. Um, subreddit was just created, so yeah, I mean. Favorite. Might be able to recruit some of those people to. Jade Empire's done pretty well. Uh, maybe not as well as I expected, but Jade, Jade Emp- that thats a tough group for them to move on from. All right, is it time for the obscure Mass Effect character of the week? I believe it yes. is. So I'm currently on a Tuchanka. Uh, I'm currently on a Tuchanka kick mm-hmm. because I had a character recommended by some guy, and that's his actual—the actual name he uses. Some guy who recommended Erdnok Darg, who is the captured captured Krogan scout. On Tuchanka, and I went and I saw. So I originally, I was like, I'm gonna look for this guy's clip, and I got through four characters that I wanted to put on before I got there, and I'm not even done with Tuchanka. But here's uh, here's Erdot Darg. I can do it. You? I said a badass, not some scout whining like a quarry and with a tummy ache. I can do it. I'm a, and I'm going to the female camp. Damn right you are. Get back there and show them what you're worth. Go, go. Nicely done. Fortunately, subject is unlikely to be contagious. So, yeah, he's like a little, little, he whines and then he comes back. And you don't actually learn his name until he sends you a message. Yeah. Assuming, Um, I'm I'm assuming if you don't convince him to leave, he doesn't send you a message. Well, no, I think my favorite thing with him is if you have Tally with you um, and you make the comment of, oh, what, are you going to react like a Quarian does? Tally just goes, hey, that's rude. (laughs) That's the quote I used. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't yes! have tally in it though. Yes. Doesn't Fucking have tally, which I'm bummed. Yeah. That, well, that's the best quote that has him in there. I mean, true, but uh. I'm All so right, so happy. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have one more Chichanka character, and then I'll get back to a couple recommendations. I actually went through and picked up quotes from someone that I didn't have. Okay. So um, right now we're just kind of like chilling on. Tuchanka. I can't get off it. I love all the characters. I have to stop. i like I keep on watching. I'm like, oh, that guy's great because they all say funny things. Oh yeah. The d- now that I look back, it's like, oh, the dialogue was great. One well, Dijonka. Uh, Krogans, they'll just say what they think, and they're they're kind of dicks. They're like, oh yeah, we rip killed that guy. Yeah, I mean, 
there's All right, so yeah, if you have a recommendation, the best way to get it to me is accidentallycasualgmail.com or send me a tweet. Those are the ones I find quicker. But we do have a uh, Discord channel that Tucker yes, gets excited then, about every couple days. Yeah. I am I'm so happy with it. There is almost 100 people. We're at 90. Apparently gets very active on the release day of the podcast. So if you're listening to this on the Wednesday, you go, jump in there and there's a conversation going. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well that's because that's when more people start joining. But it absolutely, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the weekend, like it, it kind of gets a little quiet around Sunday and Monday. But, you know, it, 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 there's always some sort of conversation going on, especially as more people join. There's always some something going on mm -hmm. at some point we're going to get to our uh we have game pitches tucker like was super into this idea and then his game was too complicated and so i let him spend 20 minutes talking about weird theory stuff which yeah uh, and people like that some people liked it i will let you do that the if you're that passionate about a subject the, but i the i don't know majority of the comments are absolutely i mean some of them are saying that you know it was kind of hard to follow which is fair when i was being stopped every 10 seconds i was definitely but, not stopped near 10 seconds every couple minutes i jumped that is, in that's called exaggeration my dear friend minius well it's i didn't want but, it to be a 20 minute monologue i know and you know what could have made it shorter holy not shit! not interrupting minius. no well, basically like i maybe for those 20 minutes first of all it was 22 minutes and i maybe talked for two of those minutes and but you would say things that like I'm like I don't agree with that, but oh yeah no no sure I felt like, like I couldn't let it go. Oh, Tucker's like the, the, back. Thing, the thing about the thing about the universe being flat. Oh God, it is. Yes. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's 3D the term. Flat. It's the term of flat. By the way, saying sure and absolutely. The, what, but what I was, you, I was one of the issues you had that. is you were you were declaring um, theories as fact, which is what I took issue I mean, with. Which is exactly Even what you do when you're making a pitch. Still considered a theory, but you didn't. Like, I was just trying to explain. But n these were like unconfirmed. I mean, okay, scientific theory is different from like the way we normally do theory. Scientific theories are have evidence and are proven, and these don't have a lot of evidence behind them. So that's where I was getting into the issue. But this is also something we will do occasionally if you feel very very passionate about something. And also, and we it, will like, send it I to the end of the podcast. I know that this theory is like debunked for the most part. I just think it's fun. I think the idea of our universe just being uh, the thin layer surface of a 4D hypersphere, I think that's just such a cool concept, such a cool idea. So anyway, back about to those game pitches you were talking about. Yeah, the game pitch is one. Uh, eventually, we're going to do that. Uh, my game pitch uh, involved the Josh Whedon franchise, and the stuff's finally coming out about him. So I mean, you could still, you can still. Do yeah, I'm trying to think of like to do. I'm like, like, oh man. But first of all, I, that doesn't. I guess, doesn't I guess matter. I'll get into this now since it's it's worth doing it. So Josh Whedon, probably my favorite writer. Um, about what two three years ago it came out uh, that he was doing weird stuff on the set of justice league yeah he took over justice league and uh uh that was a rough assignment uh i don't want to defend this guy but he was basically accused of being racist on the set specifically towards uh ray fisher mm -hmm. uh he might not be racist but he's definitely a dick apparently uh more people have come out and worked on his older franchises. The The one that really got me is Sarah Michelle Gellar, who plays Buffy, who's his premier character, says, I love being associated with Buffy. I don't want to be associated with Josh Whedon. I went, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Everyone, like, like, I always wondered why when Ray Fisher said, hey, this guy is a dick, he's being racist, why none of his actors, because he's had the same group of actors come out and support or come out and be in a bunch of his stuff, none of them supported him in that. And I went, oh, that's really suspicious. That's not good. And then, yeah. and then this recent stuff. The the one that really got to me, and I'm this is why I'm not entirely sure to react with that is uh, Michelle Trachtenberg, who played Buffy's sister and was 15 at the time. There was she said there was a rule on set that he was not allowed to be alone with her, Ooh. and that's all she said on it. So it leaves it to your imagination. You're like, wow, that's really creepy. Mm. That's not kind of creepy. That's really creepy. Yeah, that that's. Mm, uh, nope, and it's nope. like I'm thinking of this like when, when uh, Ray Fisher initially sp spoke out, he's like, "He, this guy's a racist." I'm like, "I don't believe you," which, I mean, I feel a little bit bad about. I don't think he, although looking back, I'm not sure he's racist. I think he's just a dick. And then 
specifically went at Ray Fisher and he was the only African American or African, I guess he's British, that he assumed that was racism, but it looks like he's just a dick. He also might be racist. Yeah, uh, I was I don't about know. to say, being a dick and being racist can become very hand in hand. He very also might be funny. racist, but it, it, it's it's interesting that like now you're just thinking like, oh man, because I like his stuff so much. And by the way, well, has, if, if, has he said anything about this? Because like, no. well, we're, we're hearing one side it's like, okay, have we? What what heard... what is he going to say at this point? I mean, I don't know, but I, I was just curious of what has he said of it, just so we can as far know as what... as far as I've seen, nothing. Uh, this okay. basically broke in the last week. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so and but probably... but almost everybody is coming out and saying, "Listen, this guy was super." At least it wasn't nothing criminal has come out yet. But uh, yet. not nobody has anything good to say. There there may not be anything criminal. It's just I always wondered why he didn't get more work, Josh Whedon, because he's a terrific writer. And this he, this explains he even it. In the MCU, didn't he? He that? is one of the major figures behind the MCU being successful. Yep. Uh, yeah. He's the director and writer of bo- the first two Avengers movies, and is responsible for casting all those people. I mean, he, right? he wasn't... they brought him on shortly after uh, Iron Man, the first one, and they say but now it's like Kevin Feige. Well, Feige was the main guy the whole time, but they're like, oh. okay, you come in here and you write this stuff, and he he cast uh, Chris Hemsworth was the reason he was cast, and Mark Ruffalo. And brought in Vision and Wanda. That's going on with the the you know Wanda Vision series. That's he's the guy who brought so them in. So good. And uh, I mean, this I is. Watch, we will just we will right do, now? hold on, Tucker. I haven't I haven't seen any of that. We're gonna watch it when the season's out. Uh, discuss when the season's out. And anyway, so I'm like I'm like oh this is the this is the first one of the guys that like I I really like this guy's stuff and boy he's not what I thought he was. Yep. Uh, and I and I don't I no longer feel comfortable recommending uh, Firefly, which is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And really? Yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe I does, should get over it, that because does it's it not have that big of an impact. It's if... it's his thing. I mean, he wrote basically all of it and well, all the yes, characters. But and... is it? It shouldn't. Does, it probably does a shouldn't be right. Person. Because it is, it's a group thing. Like, there's also Nathan Fillion and yeah, all, if, like, if the you other look people, at, like, all of their efforts in Yeah, if you look at Buffy, well. like, Buffy, you don't want to eliminate Buffy from people viewing it because it does a lot of stuff. And so he probably shouldn't get as much credit as I'm giving him. And maybe he doesn't. Well, but, I mean, he could have major credit on it, but I still feel like you can separate a bit the artist from the art. I guess I, I normally like some... I normally try to do that unless they're somewhat abusive. I mean, I guess this yes. sounds a little I mean, bit more there, like there's, there is a line. A- but... Artists are usually really, really weird uh, because they yeah. see the world in a different way. And so they act differently. And that's how they come up with stuff that's, you know, that normally people can come up with. But this is more along the lines of doing something like, oh, man. Anyway. But you do know that uh, WandaVision is supposed to be six hours long. When it, the when the final episode's out, I'll have to watch it then. I'm, uh, does that, that's not gonna stop me. Well, I meant that's like a, I, a lot. Like I, you, you could start watching part of it now. No, no, about I'm gonna, it, I'm, a, I'm gonna watch really the whole thing in one good. sitting. I mean, I wonder if there. I I don't know if Disney Plus will do it. Kind of doubtful, but they if there is like a watch all, like a they'll take out the credits and the before. Thing and just kind of have like a yeah, I don't flow. really I don't really need that you can skip forward pretty easy Any, anyway I thought I'd bring that up Although, uh, eventually like, we'll get to our thing but I I feel like some of it is going to be missed because part of what what feels like with WandaVision it may right, be different Tucker, with some of the other ones enough talking about that, WandaVision I haven't seen it yet you're well, going to spoil no, no, it for that, me that, it's like missing that weak gap it feels like that's kind of part of I hate the weak like, gap I refuse to do it anymore so if that's part of the way enjoying it, I, d- I don't enjoy that part. So, well, a fun fact is a that fun fact is that we are ending this, the podcast. Well, yeah, this are. has been episode twenty-seven of Accidentally Casual. Uh, we are on every week. I'm jumping into this one quickly and don't have my script up. <laughs> go, go quickly, improvise. But, 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 but basically, so if you want to uh, catch us, we'll be back next week. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Minis GC. Tucker's at Chick Twitter at Abby Tucker. Scott is at Bioware B. You can check us out on the Discord channel. And have a good week yourself. Bye!
Okay, I'm muting you on most of that, Tucker. So I can get, take it out. What, what do you mean, oh? Oh! Oh! I want to talk about dumb random stuff. It's relevant. Is it? Is it? I, I like to think so. <laughs>